Okay, and we are back with Kakura Bachi, and this time it's going to be a triple threat. We're we'll going to be covering three chapters. Um, this is definitely not me covering for missing um, <laughs> missing a video last week. This is definitely me just doing three chapters. And my goodness, is there a lot that happens? Um, we get an amazing fight sequence against um, Cloud Gouger. Um, we get a lot of, I guess, more revelations about, you know, this special ore, um, and then a bunch of new characters are introduced, and so far, I think these three chapters have really set the stage for, I think, the big climax of this arc, and uh, I'm, I'm excited, I'm, I can't wait, um, especially because it's a rescue mission, although it is very tropey for anime to have a rescue arc, um, I think this one is... Uh, much needed because there's no stakes attached there's there's a time limit trying to rescue someone um because they're being tortured i think is a really good plot point and uh yeah so, so let's just jump straight into it um with chapter nine of course if you remember last chapter we got sort of the ambush from cloud gouger and so it's just sort of just trying to counter uh the ambush and we don't know how he found found them. Um, we don't at least know yet. Um, that's yet to be discovered, but um, maybe we'll get it revealed later on. But yeah, N10 versus Cloud Gouger. Really cool art, by the way. I, I just sort of love their, um, the, sort of the, um, I guess, art direction here. And I love how it's just straight action <laughs> going forward, which is amazing. Um, and we get a really good fight sequence where it's just, um, you have sort of Cloud Gouger and you get to see sort of the powers of Cloud Gouger. Um, there's more like, for example, he can use lightning, he can use clouds, so he can use basically like mist to cla camouflage himself. Um, but then he can also use lightning to sort of attack a wide array of enemies or like try and hurt civilians. So that was really cool. Um, and then what happens is, um, what he'll do is, what um, at least Shihiro does, is right when he's about to use it against, like, this, um, the populace, because Shihiro's whole thing is, his father's made the swords to protect. Um, but the villain here, he wants to say, no, these are meant to kill, let me kill as many people and sort of break you that way. And so it's really a clash of ideals here that I... I love I, I love it when they do that because it adds more stakes to not only just people's lives are at stake but it's also about legacy and what kind of legacy his father is going to leave behind if these words end up hurting a lot of people um, so we get an amazing fight sequence and we also get an amazing moment from Chihiro here who basically redirects the lightning um, using his own sword and basically takes on all the damage and he actually looks really cool all burnt up you know blood coming from his head um, really cool moment from him. Um, and a very anime moment too, where he's like, I'll take you on. Um, and then I guess that's where I guess the cliffhanger is, is him just sort of fighting back and stopping. Um, of course. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, he's, they're basically going to try and stop. Uh, Sojo. So Sojo is the main villain here. Sorry, I had to look that up for a sec. Yeah, Sojo is the main villain that he was clashing with. And so basically what happens is the clash continues against Sojo. And he's 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 beaten up. He's he's going through it. But um So what's like really nice is that we get an amazing fight sequence. We get a really cool moment too where they both clash with swords and it's like the swords are both at each other's necks <laughs> and one and then Jiro's blade is actually at Sojo's face and so it's like they instantly dodge so they're like on par in terms of skill so that shows sort of how menacing Sojo is at this time um very very final boss material for sure um and then what happens is um right before um sort of right before sort of like we get that big final clash between the two they're of course interrupted by um five of the people from the government organization 
Um, and they come in to help Jihiro, but then right before, um, Sojo of course recognizes, yeah, this is probably a losing battle for me. I'm outnumbered, outmanned. So what he did, what does he do? He basically uses clouds to camouflage his escape and basically take Char because that was his whole mission is to take Char for his own means and Chihiro was protecting her. So he's like, yeah, I'll just cut my losses. Let me steal Chihiro and camouflage. And Chihiro sees a car driving away knowing that Char could be in there. Um, so he decapitates one of the passengers, which is epic moment. But then he realizes that it's only her leg. And the truth is, is that they have her in another car and they use that as camouflage. And so now the villains, Sojo um, and his henchmen, have Char. And it's not looking good for him because they're going to be tar torturing Char to sort of understand something that is going to be revealed in the next chapter. And then we jump to chapter 11 where basically the big fight is over. Um, it's kind of ended at a standstill because they weren't able to continue the fight. But what I do love about it is it introduces um, the Daten Dateneski. I guess that's how you say it, the Dateneski. And the Dateneski is this rare ore that is now introduced that basically is described as this very rare ore that contains spiritual energy more so than any person and um, what's amazing about this is that these enchanted blades that his father made are made from this rare ore and so um, when they're going over the explanation why his father was important why the blades are important it's because his father was the only one who knew how to craft them and use the ore to make these blades and so we get sort of an explanation on like why the blades are so powerful, why they're so mystical, why there's only so many in existence. It's because it's made from a rare ore. And on top of that, there's a rare process to make that rare ore into swords, um, which I thought was cool. Um, and so what they want to do is they want to basically take Char and using, I guess, what they learned from Char's biology, which if you remember from earlier chapters, um, it's revealed that Char is from this rare clan that has basically been hunted down because um, they can regenerate limbs and they have like sort of a healing factor going on. So hopefully that from her cells they're hoping to develop this new weapon. So the main villain's goals aren't to kidnap the little girl for, you know, um, just for the sake of being evil. No, it's a nefarious purpose of torturing her and trying to break down her cells so they can develop a super weapon and turn this rare ore that they do have they're not swords yet, they have rare ore, turn them into an even bigger weapon. So, a lot of stakes here because one, there's a super weapon that Sojo is developing. Two, Char is now being tortured. Um, very much so, so it, the time is ticking. Char, like, Jiro wants to rescue Char as soon as he can. Um, because it's an awful situation to be in. It, it's very... It, it's, it's giving me very much... Um, um, arena vibes from uh, my hero um, with the way uh, you know a villain just wants to torture someone who can regenerate and it's a little girl it's it's awful um, and of course Shiro makes up his mind he meets like some of the new members of the team and their plan is like yeah we're just gonna go in and kill Sojo he's like take me with you take me with you and he says he just wants to rescue Char he doesn't really care about killing Sojo he'll leave killing Sojo to them um, but his main goal is he wants to rescue Char but Knowing how these things go, I think they're going to get obliterated. I think Sojo is going to prove to be way too much for them. And Jiro is actually going to have to come in and rescue them. Because that's how, you know, these things plays, play out. So, um, overall, I think it's a great chapter. Um, very bloody, very violent for the first two. Um, in terms of, like, because it's the big fight. Or, I guess it's, like... I don't know, it's the penultimate fight, where it's like, it's right before the big climax, but it's hyping it up, it's building it up. And that's how I feel what these chapters are. Oh, and also Chihiro was in a coma for five days too, um, which is why he's like so frantic. He's like, five days have passed and Chihiro's already, and Char's already being tortured so much. Um, that's why he's like so motivated to go and rescue her, but overall, I think... These have been some of the best chapters of um, Kakurabachi. Definitely the last two because it's all the action. Um, 
And then what I think the third chapter for this one, although there was basically no action, it does introduce um, this rare ore, and we learn more about the swords and more about the world building, and I appreciate that. Um, are we going to get a black market auction fight where they're just taking it out, you know, and fighting, and Chiro's going to have this epic moment? I think so. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I don't know. I think the story is going to go interesting from here. Now, what I think is going to dictate the direction of the story is the way they end this arc. Now, I personally want them to end on this cliffhanger. Like, I know Chihiro's probably going to beat Sojo. That's, that's it, it's par for the course. It, it's fate. It's going to happen. He's going to defeat him one way or another. But the question I have um, that I'm thinking about and I'm considering is more so how they defeat him. One, is that's the big one. And two, what is the big cliffhanger? What motivates um, Jiro to pursue these others? Like, what's the next lead into the next villain and the next sword? Um, as well as, sort of, what are the villains planning as a retaliation? Because that's also a very important step. Um, and I think one, one show, and to, to make comparisons here, because it's very similar, Demon Slayer actually does that really well, is um, when... Um, so when, uh, of course, um, Tanjiro starts taking out the upper moons, <laughs> um, of course, um, Muzen basically goes in and he's like, look, I'm going to murder like half the people that are basically not doing their, you know, not doing their jobs and are basically cannon fodder. And I'm going to make one of them even more powerful because this is unacceptable. And of course, Tanjiro beats him, but at least the villain is trying to actively prevent him from, you know, pursuing because he's shaping up to be a real threat. So hopefully um, Kakurabachi does that. Um, but yeah, um, great chapter. I would say chapter 9, I would give probably a 9 out of 10. Really cool. Um, chapter 10, also a 9 out of 10. And then for this chapter, chapter 11, I'd probably give this an 8. Um, just because there wasn't any action. But we got a really um, great element um, to add to the, story, um, to the world building. So... Um, I can't, I can't fault it for that, but yeah, what did you guys think of Kakurabachi? Um, did, did you love these last chapters? Did you think, want more? Um, are you excited for where they're taking the story and eventually that big showdown in the auction? Let me know all your thoughts, um, down below and more. And I think that's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted to talk about Kakurabachi and, uh, yeah, I just, I love the show, or not, I don't, I don't love the show, I love the manga so far, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, and, uh, I'll catch you guys later, thanks guys.